right, so we begin coding our application and we're going to start from the app.php file. That's where we're going to put our app class. And this is an important class because the entire website will run inside this class. So open app.php inside your core folder and let's begin typing. Make sure your PHP tags are there. So we're going to call this class app like this. And then I'm going to start by creating some protected uh, properties in here. I'm going to call the first one controller and I'll give it a default value of home. Another protected. Now the reason these are protected is because I don't want them to be accessed, to be able to access from outside. So I'll protect them like that. This one will be called index. Okay, now let's make two functions in here. So the function, the first function is called the constructor. So put two underscores, one, two, and then write construct like this. Okay, so now the constructor, the moment we initialize this class, the constructor function will run automatically. So you can explicitly call this a public function if you want. And then I'm going to make a private function called parse URL. This one is private because only other functions in here can access it, not from outside, just like protected here. But I prefer private on this one. Okay. So if you remember very well, there's uh, actually let's initialize this class since this is a valid class. Now we can go to our index page and down here we're going to say up is equal to new up. This is all we're ever going to do in the index page. So the index page is done. We have initialized our app, which means our website will run. Let me close that. So at this point, the app class will run. And since the constructor is the first thing that we run, we'll put our code in there. So the first thing I want to do is collect my URL. I'm going to say URL is equal to parse URL. Like, oh, sorry. Parse URL like that. So I'm calling this function right there. Now, since this function belongs to the same class as where I'm typing here, I should use the key name this like so if i don't it's going to tell me that unknown function here so you put this and then you put your function there same thing when accessing this you put this and then you type this text here so now that we have our url there what i want to do is just print it out so that you can see that we actually have our url there and this one is getting a value from this function which is here so we must return something in here so to do so i'm going to say url is equal to i'll use the get variable because that's where we shoved our url in there and then here i'm going to say return url so if now i go to my index page and refresh the page I don't see anything. So that is suspicious because this is supposed to run, print out. Oh, actually it is running. That's what I'm seeing here. Great. So there we go. Now, if for example, I don't, if the user just types your base URL, you're going to get undefined index URL. So in order to avoid this, let's put a, an if statement here. We'll just do this. This is called a ternary operator or something like that. So I'm going to use that method. I'm going to say is set. This is just an if statement, but I like doing it this way because it's one line. I'll do that. And home. So what I'm telling it is that if this condition is true, I'm asking if this is set. If it is set, then assign this to that. If this is false, which means this is not set, give this thing a value of home. 
so i'm sure at this point we'll get home there we go but i'll go back to where we had something here there we go now now that I have that out of the way, I'm going to sanitize this data because it's coming from a URL, so it's definitely not safe. So what I will do here, before I sanitize it, I'm going to explode it using the slash. But wait a minute, before I do this, I want to put a valid, a better looking URL. So I'm going to say products, uh, yeah, products, food, milk, something like that. So it's giving me an error because of this part right here. So instead, let's do return URL. Okay, so now you see products, food, milk. Now I want to separate these into separate items inside an array. So products on number one, food, milk, and then five. So to do that, this is where we do the explode thing. We're exploding using the slash. And then I'll put URL there. So I don't need this return there. So if I do this now, you see that it has turned this into an array, which is good. But sometimes if somebody adds a few slashes at the end like this, you get some empty variables here. So let me let me do something here so we can clearly see what's going on. Let's go to our functions.php and add one function in here. So PHP tag, let's add our first function. I'm going to sh call this one show, just for it to show me some data in a cleaner format. So I'm going to say print readable data. And then I'm going to echo out some pre-tags which will help in the visualization of this data. It looks much better than that one liner we have at the moment. So remove that. So opening pre tag closing, just that. So I'm going to be using show to call this function. So let me go to app.php and then instead of uh, print error, I'll use show. So if I refresh now, you, you see it better like this. So because of the slashes at the end, I'm getting this extra empty array. So we don't want these empty arrays. So what I will do is I'm going to trim this variable at the very end here so i'll use trim like that open and close bracket now trim usually uses it uh, removes the spaces from the beginning and the end of a string but if you put a comma and you tell it what character to look for it can remove that instead of the spaces so let me refresh and there we go so even with these extra stuff here I still get my uh, my five, my, my four things here. Okay, so, so far so good. And then because this is never clean data, uh, the data here is never clean. So what I want to do is sanitize it. So I can use a function called filter. It's called filter var underscore var, if I'm not mistaken here. So I'm going to wrap this whole thing inside that filter var like this. So filter var, and then in this filter, I can put a comma there and tell it what to filter. So there are some um, constants. Filter one is called sanitize underscore URL like that. Oh, let me remove the wrapping of words here. Filter sanitize URL. So this doesn't seem like it's working because it's supposed to have an apostrophe like that. So this tells me that I've done something wrong here. Let me refresh. Oh, I guess not. It's working fine. I'll check on this uh, later. In a, if I'm wrong here, I will correct it in the next video. But this is what we're supposed to do here. Okay, so, so far what we have done, let's do a recap uh, to show what we've done. We've created a, a class and then we've given it a controller, a default controller and a default method, which are protected because they will be used right here and nowhere else. Then we have a constructor here. This constructor runs immediately. We instantiate this class and the instantiation is happening in the index page right here. 
So once the class is instantiated, it runs and then it's requesting a URL from this place here, a clean version, which is converted to an array. And then we're simply displaying the array onto the page like so. Okay, so in the interest of keeping the videos short, I'm going to see you in the next video where we proceed to create our router. So this is the class that to, the router will determine what file we are going to load in this list here, depending on the URL. So I'll see you in the next video.